Well there, boys and girls. Welcome back. As you can see, Virtual Patterson here to discuss Phylum Chordator. But first, the bell. And second, the bell work. What phylum do humans belong to? As you can see, it's Phylum Chordata. That is the phylum that the humans belong to. Their defining feature, this is number three of the bell work, is that no-toe cord. It's a supportive structure that goes down the back. It's actually where chordates get their name. N-O-T-O. -O. Cord. No-toe cord. Not the spine like you'd think, just no-toe cord. What phylum did we skip? This means answer. We skipped phylum Echinodermata with the sea stars and whatnot. We'll come back to that one next week after we dissect the frog. But first, blanks are the youngest phylum of blanks on the planet. We're talking about, yes, chordates. Chordates are the youngest phylum of, uh-huh, Aminos owns the planet. They appeared in the blank record in blank layers dating back to blank years ago. They appeared in the, you know, where like dead animals and stuff are found. In the fossil record, which is in blank layers. Where do we find fossils? In, yes, rock layers. Dating back to, give me a number, any number. Close enough. 550 million years ago. That is, that's, that's pretty old. It's pretty old. But keep in mind, that's the youngest phylum, right? The one that split off last. Therefore, scientists consider them to be the most modified group, having the most time for blank evolution to affect his structure. Yes, having the most time for evolution to be affecting their structure. Members of phylum blank have several blanks that other blanks do not. Members of phylum, aha, uh -huh, chordata. Make sure to capitalize it because it is a proper noun, children, proper noun. Members of phylum chordata have several blanks that other blanks do not. Yes, they have adaptations or modifications that other blanks do not. This is a group of uh, evolutionarily similar organisms on a cladogram. On a cladogram, on a cladogram. That's right, we call those clades. Members of phylum chordata have several modifications that other clades do not. Many of them are considered to be blanks, however, some are leftover blanks. So many of them are considered to be the ones that give you the advantage. Adaptations. However, some of them are leftover blanks that have blanked, but are not necessarily a blank. Some of them are leftover. That's right, legacies. You know, like that kid that nobody wants in the club, but he gets in because his parents and uncles and whoever were in the club. Yeah, legacies, he's a legacy. So some of these modifications are adaptations, some are legacies. Those are traits that blanked, uh-huh, traits that evolved. However, they're not necessarily an a blank, which is what makes them an adaptation. They were not necessarily an advantage. So some of these traits are just traits that, yeah, we have this trait, it wasn't an advantage now, probably not an advantage ever, uh, it's just sort of left over, it wasn't selected against, didn't give a disadvantage, or it just randomly happened to form. And that's one of the ways that we track how different clades are related to each other and how we track the evolutionary history of organisms through the ones that are not advantages, the legacies. So we're gonna talk about a few of those later, but first, Next paragraph. There are blank main characteristics that all blanks possess. There are, give me a number, like this number. That's right. Four. There are four main characteristics that all blanks possess. Who are we talking about today? Chordates. Four main characteristics that all chordates possess. The first is what they're named for. Oh, from the bell work. Yes, the noto chord. It's a primitive support structure that is blank, found just beneath the blank, blank, blank. So it's, it's not filled in on the inside. Instead, we call it hollow. It's hollow because it's not filled in on the inside. And it's found just beneath. So actually superficial to it, more on top. 
on your back is the blank blank blank. The first word is a word for back. No, not butt. Dorsal's the word I'm looking for. It's called the dorsal nerve cord or the DNC. Dorsal nerve cord. Uh-huh. Yeah, like the nerve cord. So the dorsal blank cord is one of the blankest bundles of blanks in any blank. The dorsal, yes, nerve cord is one of the blankest bundles of blanks in any blank. It's one of the, yes, biggest or largest. It's one of the largest bundles of blanks in any blank. Ooh, what's it? Dorsal what cord? Yes, dorsal nerves cord. So it's one of the biggest bundles of nerves in any animal because we're talking about kingdom animalia. It is also blank in the center like the notochord was. So that is, yeah, it's also hollow in the center. This cord connects to the blank to the rest of the body. Connects the brain, the brain to the rest of the body. It allows for a direct line of blankification from the blank, blank, blank to the nerves and blanks of the body. Direct line of what, what's that nerve core? What are nerves really doing there? They're for, yes, they're for communication, right? Talking to each other. Direct line of communication from the blank, blank, blank to the nerves and blanks of the body. From the, we call the brain and the, the spinal cord, well, the, the nerve cord that's in there together, we call them, because they're in the, you know, middle of the body, we call them the central nervous system or CNS so the nerve cord the dorsal nerve cord allows for direct line of communication from the central nervous system to the nerves and the uh, muscles of the body so the nerves and muscle of the body that is also known as the peripheral nervous system sorry you got a you got camera shadow there but I think you can see it says system. Nerves and muscles of the body, that's the peripheral nervous system. So if you hear somebody say peripheral nervous system, that's, you know, on the sides. Central nervous system, up and down, the middle. All right. Next one. You saw this in the worms. You didn't really see it too much in the other things we dissected, but it was there. We're talking about the mouth out of the mouth. The pharynx. So the pharynx is a structure present in many organisms. Blanks use it to extend through their blank and consume food. Who had the one that could like stick out? Yeah, what kind of worms? What kind of worms? Yes, annelid worms, the segmented worms. Annelids use theirs to extend through the blank to consume food. Extend through the mouth. Yes, they use theirs to extend through the mouth to consume food. And I believe I have a picture. Oh, look at that pharynx. Look at that pharynx coming out. That says pharynx one. Let's look at pharynx two. Holy crap, y'all. This is what's called a tube worm. It lives in the ocean. Here's the mouth. Here's the pharynx. Like a big, long, gross worm tongue. Just, uh, ew. So, blanketive chordates. These are ones that are be really low, really close to the base. So we could call them basal. Sometimes we just call them primitive, although basal is really the better word. Right, basal. Forget primitive. That's a dumb word. Basal. B-A-S-A-L. Basal chordates have blankangeal blanks. That is, slits in the blanks. Yeah, they're slits in the blank, so we call them blankangeal blanks. Yes, pharyngeal slits. As in slits in the pharynx. That's right, slits in the pharynx. These are either used to trap blank or as a type of blank system for blank exchange. Usually though, they're used to trap, come on, who are you, gonna, who you want to trap in your throat? Your hunger predator? That's right, you need to trap food. Or as a type of blank system for blank exchange, slits here. Feces have them, right? So they use them as a, as a gill system for blank blank. Breathing is one word. Blank blank is what breathing really is. It's yeah, gas exchange. That's why you need to breathe so we can do gas exchange. Fish don't really breathe. I mean, they have gills for gas exchange. Breathing is like a, a gas. 
that's breathing. You don't do that underwater. You use, you use gills. Right? Here's the thing though, evolutionary legacy time, they're still present in human blanks as well. This would be the young, like before fetus, and not just humans, but all chordates have these when they're, when they're really small, when they're at the embryo stage. When they're at the embryo stage. All right, so this is a human embryo. Yes, this is what you used to look like maybe once upon a time. This is taken with, an, with a really, really strong electron microscope. But you can see right here, see these? Those are the pharyngeal slits. Now I want you to think about this. Do we need gills when you know, you're inside the, the womb? No, you don't need gills when you're inside the womb. All that gas exchange happens through the belly button, through the, through the umbil I'm touching my belly button, but you can't see it. And it's probably a good thing, it's, that's weird. But yeah, through, through the umbilical cord, that's where you do like all the gas and food exchange when you're, you know, but we have pharyngeal slits anyway, that's an evolutionary legacy. It wasn't selected against, but it's evidence of our lineage as chordates. So yeah, pharyngeal slits. All chordates have them as embryos. Some of the more primitive ones still use them in adulthood. The final structure or final feature of being a that's right, a chordate, that's the common name for phylum chordata, is having a blank blank. It's a thing, it's very reduced to humans, but all chordates have this, and it's after the, the, the anus. Yes, the butthole, it's after the anus, so we call it a post-anal tail, meaning after anal tail. Here is picture. As you can see, here's mouth. Here's pharyngeal slits. Oh, that's fun. Here's the brain, kind of a wimpy brain. Right here, you've got the dorsal nerve cord. Remember, everything else's nerve cord was ventral on, on the belly side. So dorsal nerve cord. Here's that sweet, sweet notochord. And you'll notice that everything we've been dissecting so far, the very end of it, there's the anus at the end. However, look on chordates. They've got an anus. And after the anus, they have the post-anal tail. Key feature. All chordates have one. They've got this notochord, and that allowed them to have that post-anal tail. So this means that the blank is no longer the very blank end of the body. This means that the, that's right, the anus is no longer the very blank end of the body. This is the very, you know, towards, towards the anus, the very, yes, posterior. So the anus is no longer the very posterior end of the body because it has that post-anal tail going down being even more posterior. In many blanks, these are the ones with bones and stuff, yes, in many vertebrates, this tail is highly blanked, uh -huh, highly reduced, it's shrunken all down. In many vertebrates, the tail is highly reduced. In humans, all we have is a slight blank. We have a tail, but it's not like all long and, and tail-like, right? Instead, we have a tail, and it is a tailbone. Yes, tailbone. However, in many species, this structure is highly blankular. Yeah, it's highly muscular in many chordates, and used for... locomotion. So in many chordates, right, here this one, it is used in locomotion, and you're like, wait, no, the legs. This is used for balance, which is a key part of locomotion. Same thing with uh, cats. Here, you got a, a gator. Don't, don't worry, it's a statue of a gator. But here's a gator. It uses its tail for locomotion, very fast swimming, uses it to like spring jump out of the water too. So most chordates, have a really muscular tail used for locomotion. Some vertebrates, it's, it's really shrunken now. Okay, so there's three main blanks of chordates. There's three main, yeah, group of evolutionary history. We call that a clade. There's three main clades of, that's right, we're talking still about chordates. Three main clades of chordates. There are two of them that have no bones at all. What's the word for no bones at all? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, vertebrates. So no, no backbone. Vertebrae, the, the, that's, your, that's your backbone. No backbone in, no, none, invertebrates. So there's two, two clades of invertebrate 
two whole classes. The classes, I'll give you these, are Eurochordata. Here's one C. It's got that note of chord. gives it like a big old... And, and, and what the... That looks like a sponge. Wait, look, look. That looks like a sponge. But it's way, way, way more advanced, way more distal. I mean, this, this, this thing's up there with, like, but with us. We have more in common with this thing than it does with sponges or corals or any of that nonsense. It's a Eurochordata, right? The other class is Cephalochordata. Who's Cephal? Right? See how they've got that head region? See all those appendages? Notice they've got those nice pharyngeal slits. You can see them really well. Big strong tail. Yes, this is the diagram I showed you earlier. So you can see the nerve cord. You can see the notochord. See it right there. Anus is somewhere in here. You can see a little better on this one. Anus. So they got urochordata, cephalochordata. Both of these are, are lacking in the backbone department. So they're invertebrates. So both these are lacking a backbone. Those in which the blank has been modified into a column of blanks. So those in which the, the supportive structure, yes, the notochord. So those in which the notochord has been modified into a structure of solid bones. We call those ones, yeah, vertebrates, vertebrates. And the imaginative name of the class for vertebrates is class vertebrata. Keep in mind that those two invertebrates, they are just as different as we are from both those groups of invertebrates. So it's, it's weird, right? Because we're all three different classes. So vertebrata, that's the class of the vertebrates. These members have a powerful blank. Yeah, yeah, this is the trait that gives you an advantage. A generic term, yes, adaptation. These members have a powerful adaptation as the blank. This is that column of bones. Aha, vertebrae. See it? All bone-like and whatnot. Yeah, now you can. All bone-like and whatnot. It's because the vertebrae has tremendous amount of... Yeah, it gives a lot of support, right? It's a lot more solid than before. So that supportive structure gives tremendous support now. Also allows them to grow very blank. Uh-huh. Very large. And very, very blank. Yes, very, very strong. Those are the notes. If you guys have questions, don't ask me because I'm not here. Ask, 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 ask the grown-ups. Ask the grown-ups. Wait, wait. Don't get too crazy because we still have pre-lab dissection for the frog coming up soon.